Peter here, aka Peter Freak Out 10, bringing you guys our episode of the Movie Review Show, where the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review. And we're continuing Scream Fast! Whoa! <laughs> okay. Now, on today's episode, we're going to take a little bit of a step into another realm of the horror genre. And it's a genre that is well-known among horror fans and has become a cult favorite thanks to a particular director. And what am I talking about? The zombie genre. Now, the zombie genre has been perfected thanks to the works of George A. Romero and a little bit of Brian Uzana. Thanks to such films as Reanimator, uh, Night of the Living Dead, the remake of Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, which is a favorite among zombie fans, and Day of the Dead. All of which show how far the zombie genre has come and how much a zombie film can work. And that zombie films are not just about blood and gore, but can supply us with likable characters, some good action, and some really good settings. That's why the zombie genre works so well. But there is one question. What do you get when you parody the zombie genre and you give it, do it in a way that it works? Because it's so subtle and it does it in a way where it doesn't go all out on the airplane scale of parody. You get today's film. And what film is that, you may be asking? That film is none other than Shaun of the Dead. Get a little zoom in there. Uh-uh. So, but, yeah. Shaun of the Dead, this was a film made back in 2004, and this was directed by Edgar Wright. Now, Edgar Wright, this guy has worked in TV mostly. He did Mash and Peas. Uh, he did the show Asylum. TV's is at Bill Bailey, and TV's Merry Go Round. This is his first leap into directing a film. And how this film came about is a very interesting story because it was inspired by an episode of Spaced and the episode was basically uh, one of the characters, Tim, is under the influence of drugs and as he was playing Resident Evil, he believed he was in an alternate world killing zombies. So, pretty much Edgar Wright and the main actor, Simon Pegg, drawing influence from that, decided to write a script drawing influence from George A. Romero's work and that episode, and they pitched it to Film 4 Productions, who, while they showed interest in it, they ended up cutting back on the film's budget and almost rejected the film, but Edgar didn't give up. He actually decided to fund the film himself along with his friends who have lended him the money. The budget came to $6.1 million and the studio caved in and bought the project, so they got to work making this film. And pretty much Universal saw it, and they were like, Let's re we'll release it here in the United States as well. So the film had a budget of $6.1 million, and it first opened in the UK back in April of... 2004, and it grossed $1.6 million in its opening weekend, and that brought in a total of $6.4 million by May. Despite having a limited release in the United States, though, when it opened up, it opened to seventh place at the box office, grossing $3 million. While that may not seem like much, it is coming off of a UK premiere, so it's working off the money it made in the UK. So, combine... And combined so far, from what I gather, it seems to be doing well, but we'll get more on the final no, result once its run goes by. The film also received critical acclaim, too. On Ron Tomatoes, the film has a 92%, and on Metacritic, the film has a 79 out of 100. Film critic Peter Radshaw awarded the film a 4 out of 5, praising the script, its pace, and the direction of Edgar Wright. Roger Ebert also gave the film a 3 out of 4 stars. So critics definitely liked it, and on IMDb, it has an 8 out of 10, so has a lot of fans. So the film was a critical success. And with all the critical success and me being me, what are my thoughts on this film? I think it's not going to surprise a lot of people, but it certainly is going to surprise myself. This movie is hilarious. It is so funny. 
And I'm surprised about that because when I first heard about this film, I just thought it was going to be another parody in the vein of Hot Shots meets, meets Dawn of the Dead because that's how it was advertised as. Then people were telling me how funny it was and how it's nowhere close to being a parody. Even my old brother who saw the film before I did said the same thing. And yes, they were right. They were right. I hate to say it, they were right. This movie is as funny, if any more funny, just as funny as any of those three scary movies combined. And when you look at Shaun of the Dead, it's to making fun of zombie films as to Club Dread is to make it fun of slasher films. It is smart, it is full of heart, and it's full of great gore to satisfy any horror fan. And even if you're not into that sort of genre of gore and whatnot, you're still going to have a great time watching it. But I'll explain more about that later. But with the cast in this film, you got uh, Simon Pegg, who around this time was doing UK films such as Tube Tales, uh, Guest House, Paraduso, The Parole Officer, and 24-Hour People Party. And I guess you could say this was his first American film, even though this came out first in the UK. Um, but technically, yes, it is kind of his um, film debut in America. Uh, you have uh, Nick Frost, which this is his film debut, and both him and Simon Pegg have known each other there before this film. Um, you have Kate Ashfield in this film from uh, Watership Down, uh, the TV show. She was also in that show Soldier, Soldier, which I haven't seen. Lucy Davis from uh, Sex Live of a Potato Man. Potato Man, I don't know what that is. Uh, Dylan Morian, who had a small role in uh, Notting Hill. He was um, he was the thief in that movie. Uh, Penelope Wilton uh, from uh, Calendar Girls is also here. Uh, Bill Nye, uh, he was in uh, Phantom of the Opera with uh, Robert Englund. This guy's been in a lot of good stuff, actually. Uh, he was also in Love Actually. He was in Underworld. Uh, he was the main leader of the vampires who they put down for a bit. And Kate Beckett's Gale wakes him up. He's going to be in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and a bunch of other people from the UK. So you are getting a good cast. It may not be A-list actors, but they definitely have a lot there. But yeah, this movie is a ride. And I'm, and I'm surprised to even say that because I didn't think it was going to be that funny. I thought people were just overhyping it. But this movie is just so much fun. But I'll get into more on why I love this film there. But anyway, the basic plot of the film is basically this. We meet Sean, played by Simon Pegg, who is a store salesman living in Britain. And he's best friends with this guy, Ed, played by Nick Frost. And he has a girlfriend named Liz, played by Kate Ashfield. And Sean is one of those guys who feels like life at the moment is where he wants it to be, even though in reality he must move forward from where it is because at work he's picked on by his colleagues. He doesn't have the greatest relationship with his father, Philip, played by Bill Nye, and he's constantly jumping in front of bullets for his friend. And one day, after promising his girlfriend that he's going to take her out to dinner, because we learn in the film that they constantly go to this pub called the Winchester, and she's like, I want to get out. I want to do new things. And we continue to stay in this pub, and it's holding us back from the world. But he's like, okay, I'll do a reservation for like a fish restaurant. But he ends up screwing up because he forgets to make a reservation, and this ends up ending their relationship. So that night... He goes back to the Winchester and both him and Ed start drinking and go home. And the next day they wake up and we see this zombie invasion has come over England. And we, the viewers, see it, but our characters in the film don't. But they eventually catch on and they, and they decide that they must band together with his girlfriend and her friends, played by named David, played by Dylan Morian, and Barbara, played by Penelope Wilton. So they basically set out to save them as well as find help to get them out of the area. Will Sean and Ed be able to save his girlfriend and her friends and find shelter? Or will they be next on the zombie menu of Chow? Now, Shaun of the Dead is a hilarious film, as I said. It's a film that I think will be judged as a parody of zombie movies because of the marketing and the poster itself. But I really feel that there's a lot more to it than just being a simple parody of the zombie genre. 
And that's easy to see through its story, because while Club Dread made it clear it was making fun of the tropes of the slasher genre while telling the story, Shaun of the Dead is using the tropes of the zombie genre to make a joke about it. But around those jokes is a story that is nothing more than an everyday Briton getting pulled into a world-ending situation and trying to work his way around it, all the while learn stuff for himself, and the way the film handles that aspect to the, of the story is done really well. We've all felt like there's no direction in our life. We've all wished we could be a hero in some situation and rise above where we already are, but at the same time, we've always felt like the direction that we're in at the moment may be the easiest, but sometimes the people we love want more than just the easy route and want us to step away from our comfort zones. And they want us to actually experience something they'll like rather than what we like. And that's why the character of Sean works so well is that he's a guy with problems that he must work around as he fights through an invasion. And of course, you got to talk about the parodies of the zombie tropes in the movie, which are done really well. They are funny and smart at some points, like the part where uh, they meet up with this other girl who basically is saving her family, and the family looks a lot like the group that Sean is with, um, and they're like saying, hi, hi. And also, like, the, the scene I just talked about when he wakes up and he's, like, going to get a Coke from, like, the local convenience store and he doesn't notice that this invasion has started and they're like, ooh, ooh. He's like, I got no change. And, like, he's walking and when he goes and gets the Coke, there's, like, the blood on the fridge and he's, like, grabbing it, looking at it. He doesn't seem to notice it. So that was funny. That was funny. It really works. Too. And I'm not sure how, but I think it's because the laugh is there and it's such, it's a little thing that makes it so funny. Like the littlest like trope of how they do it makes it work very well. It's not in the vein of say like a uh, Monty Python. It's more in the vein of like a subtle little joke of like a friend doing a joke on a friend that's the basic sort of thing that i see and i think it works and i think it's also because the characters reactions are so realistic at first the little gags that aren't so realistic are done really subtly and you get the aspect of those and they of those aspects that you do see in the film and they aren't as over the top as say airplane or hot shots because i feel like in the middle of the story they it really makes it flow better, and it gets the point across instead of being just an over-the-top parody like Airplane or Scary Movie. So the story itself is done really well, and I like how it approaches the tropes. And I think the film is shot really well. Edgar Wright does a great job shooting the film. The one thing I notice is that when the film starts, it kind of, like... It starts off with like everyday angles that you would see in films, like when the film opens, like you see him going across, you see the people walking, like the camera's going a lot like that, and you see the title on the ground, and it fools you into thinking it's going to be like that. But once the action starts, I think he does a good job handling the angles, they're wide in a lot of st shots. Um, um, I like uh, the the scene in the bar, like when the camera basically spins around and basically um, basically shows like all the zombies around them, which makes us feel like three against fifty thousand. You really feel like ants as you watch that scene. Like they're bigger, like they're so much more than us, and yet they're bigger than us. So yeah, I also like the one part where. Um, where he ends up looking up to see like exactly if they're close or if anybody's around and they can get in and he, when he comes back down they're like what and he's like and the camera itself goes up and you see like all these zombies around and it sort of makes it like an oh no sort of moment so the film is shot really well i think the direction by edgar wright is done really well um and definitely shows, as I say in a lot of videos, what you can do with a small budget. And the acting in the film is top-notch. Simon Pegg supplies us with a likable lead who 
as I said earlier, it's nothing more than an everyday Joe who has problems around this whole thing. And with the problems he has, he has to basically fix them as he goes through this whole, this whole thing. And I think it really shapes him into how he deals with the problems. And he reacts in a way I think everybody can relate to. And pretty much like when he first sees a zombie, he's like, oh my god, oh! And also when he pushes that one zombie into like that thing. I'll, I'll get more to that later. Um, um, and he reacts in a... And also like the scene, scene where pretty much... Um, He's getting yelled at by his girlfriend. That is such a realistic reaction. I think how he does those particular reactions, I think he does them really well. And just the way he reacts there, I think everybody can relate to being yelled at by their girlfriend. I like how he tries to reason with her and throw away the cigarettes, but she doesn't want to listen. But as the movie goes on, you start to see his character shape himself into what everybody wants him to become. You see him care for those around him, and he takes the situation seriously. He's not joking around and being annoying. He really starts to shape himself, and he remains serious throughout. While the character may, uh, may seem like on paper, like the usual comic relief, Simon Pegg portrays it with such like ability. And while it's his stupidity what gets him into this situation with his girlfriend and the whole zombie thing, it's the fact that he knows that he messed up and he wants change and he knows he could do better. And I like the fact that the situation that he's in changes him. But he... But don't think he does, he's not going to get a laugh out of you because he does. Like the part where he's with that one guy, uh, Dave, and they're like, and Dave's like lecturing him about how how he was with his girlfriend after the conversation, and he's like, "Get four eyes." I also like the part where he they won't let her in, him in to see her before the argument, and he has to climb up the balcony. That I found funny. So, Simon Pegg does a great job. He's a lot of fun in this movie. The role of the jokester, though, in the less serious one, goes to Nick Frost as Ed, who is the best friend of Sean, and while the character may come off as the most unlikable guy in the world, there's a certain charm to him that keeps me from hating him. Possibly because you see the scenes with him, he has such devotion to his friend, and his actions that he does do make him seem more innocent. They aren't un as unlikable as any other jerks in movies. But I think it's also because of the fact that his actions seem more like a friend being a friend and sticking by him more so than abandoning him. And Nick Frost just gives him this sort of like we stick together feel that makes him less annoying and I think makes him a lot more likable than he needs him to be. And I think Nick and Simon play well off each other. And the fact that these new, these guys knew each other in real life makes their chemistry all the more believable and is a lot of fun. Like the scene when he's comforting about his girlfriend breaking up and he's talking to him. You get the idea. It's a friend talking to a friend. It doesn't feel phony or fake. It feels genuine. I also like how afterwards the two leave drunk and they're singing that song. White lines flow away. Oh, get high, baby. Oh, get high, baby. Don't ever come down. That, that was hilarious. Even when the two are in this situation, their friendship goes through highs and lows moments like any situation would similar to this. I think the fact that the two do that throughout the scenes really makes it all the more believable and I just think the two do a really good job playing off each other. There's no other way to say it. So Nick Frost does a good job. You also get Kate Ashfield as Liz, the love interest. And she does fine. She starts off as the main objective for Sean because he wants to get back together with her. But that becomes a secondary objective. And she does fine for what she has to do. Nothing too special. But I don't think it was intended to be anything special. Dylan Morian as Dave does fine for what he has to do um, as the character. He's pretty much playing a stuck-up British guy who you later find out has the hots for Liz. And he does fine. He does what he has to do. Um, the, uh, the, guy, the girl playing his girlfriend was also fine. There's not much to them. 
Bill Nye is also here as the stepdad who is quickly disposed of. Who you get the idea, him and Sean, as I said, have a tough relationship. But you get the idea he's tough on him because he wants him to know that people are going to be tough on him in life. And he wants to toughen him up. Which kind of serves as the first step to toughening him up and being harsh on him. And taking matters into his own hands. I think Bill Nye's delivery in that scene is done really well. Like when they're in, when they're in the car and he after he's gotten attacked and he's talking about how I just wanted you to seem tougher or something. I, I want to get that line. I'm wasting time, but... I'm wasting time, but... Yeah, I, I think he did really well in that scene. It's understandable. So the acting in the film is well done, but let's talk about the zombie action. It, it is done great. At the beginning with the slapstick, it does play into some of the action, like when you see the woman outside attacking them, they start throwing records at it. What I do like when they start throwing records, they decide what to throw, and I like at one point he's like, the Batman soundtrack, he's like, throw that, or Shade, and he throws it, even though he didn't want to because it was his girlfriend. He's like, well, she did break up with you. But those gave me some laughs, and they were really subtle, again. And I don't think they're in, and I think they're, that they're indulging in that aspect of subtlety with these jokes. But the film does move be more beyond that, that because it offers up a lot of blood and gore, some really good makeup effects on the zombie. For how low budget it is, the makeup is fantastic with the zombies. When they have, and the fight scenes with the zombies when they happen are really well done. I like how with that one woman who they were throwing records at before, they push her literally into this thing that holds an umbrella and she literally comes back up and there's this huge hole in her body. And it just looked really well done. And I like how at one point uh, Sean beats a few of them with a cricket back. So there's a lot of good carnage done on the zombies. But the zombies get good, get good deaths for the people. Like people get ripped apart. Um, guy gets bitten in the neck. Like so many, so much good gores. And it's done really well and looks really realistic. So the film has a lot going for it, and it's definitely a fun film. Now, in terms of cons, I can say uh, I really don't have any. I really don't have any without nitpicking. I think it's unfair to nitpick on a film like this. If I could say one, I could say I wish the characters themselves moved further from where they were. Like, I wish that there was more to the character of Liz and, the, and Dave and whatnot, maybe seeing, like, why is he such... A jerk besides the fact that he wants to get in her pants like that I think could have been done better but other than that Shaun the Dead is a perfect example of giving a movie ability to do an ability to do a parody but being in but being subtle and fun with the idea and providing a great story around it some great gore likable characters just all around a fantastic film that shouldn't be missed by anybody so I highly recommend you go see Shaun the Dead Definitely a fantastic film. So, I gotta do this. I give Shaun of the Dead a 10 out of 10. And it deserves it. And it gets my seal of approval. Definitely one that must be watched by anybody who loves zombies or any kind of, any kind of horror. You'll love Shaun of the Dead. But that's my review for Shaun of the Dead. And next time on Screenfest, I'm going to do a review of Doom 3 for a video game time. I'm going to do this. Been wanting to talk about this for a while. Um, then I'm going to do a review of Jeepers Creepers 2. I'm going to get that out of the way. And D Star Strange Land. Can't wait to talk about that. And The Dentist. So, those are what's coming next. Um, might do an update because I got some stuff recently. But anyway.
I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Shaun of the Dead. Do you guys like this film? Do you guys think it's funny? Are the critics over-exaggerating? Am I over-exaggerating? Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.